Who's your commander? Good luck. Equip. Move to combat. Resolves. Right now, before you attack, does anyone have an answer? Well played. Good game. Hello everyone, my name is DJ and you're watching the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel. Today we're talking about another multicolored legend from Commander Legends. It's Jared Cartholian True Air. Jared is red, green, white for a 3-3 legendary human warrior. When Jared enters the battlefield, target opponent becomes the monarch. You can't become the monarch this turn. If damage would be dealt to Jared while you're the monarch, prevent that damage and put that many plus one plus one counters on it. The monarch is awesome, but it's a pretty big downside that it makes us work to get it back on another turn. And then I love the idea that if damage is dealt to Jared, he gets huge. And that's the whole point of this deck. We want to make sure that Jared is huge and buff and that we regain the monarch and we trample our opponents. So how do we get Jared huge? Well, once we have the Monarch, we can just do tons of damage across the board. Blasphemous Act, Chain Reaction, and Star of Extinction. There are tons of other spells that do damage to all creatures. We're not only going to clear the way for Jared to attack, but also make sure that he gets giant. Ulvenvald Tracker, Colony Ambush, and Cartouche of Strength. All of these are fight effects. If Jared's going to be huge, then he can take out incidental creatures. But also, that fighting is just going to make him bigger and bigger. Pariah, Pariah's Shield, and Gideon's Sacrifice. We have one more way to get Jared to take damage, and that's by redirecting damage from us to him instead. We can do that with all of these spells. I like the equipment Pariah's Shield, um, mostly because, it, have you seen this art? It's a crazy, screaming, weird shield. <laughs> Keep all of these effects in mind because Jared is only one of many creatures that love being dealt damage. Let's talk about a few more. Boros Reckoner, Stuffy Doll, and Brash Taunter. All of these love taking damage and redirecting damage to players. By the way, Stuffy Doll and Brash Taunter, they're indestructible, so we can keep casting our damage spells over and over again until we basically burn our opponents out. It also makes it really difficult to attack us profitably. Next, we have Vigor, Hornet's Nest, and Stormwild Capador. But that's not all. Vigor's like a second copy of Jared, but it puts counters on all of our other creatures whenever they'll, they're dealt damage. Hornet Nest will take damage and turn into that many 1-1 death-touching flyers. This will help us keep the Monarch or steal it back, and Stormwild Capador can turn into a huge flying threat. Now, this is a powerful deck, but it is definitely a deck that wants to do big, cool things, like putting 13 Hornets into play. That's why I've included Grothama All Devouring. Sometimes this could be a liability, but... If you can interact with Grothama with your own huge Jared or all of your creatures, you can just draw so many cards. It's the same over-the-top effect that makes this deck so much fun. So I highly recommend running a Grothama in your deck. So we want to do damage and we want to have creatures that take damage really easily. That's a given. But let's talk about some other cards that help supplement this strategy. Uh, we want to take the crown. And so we want to take a look at Protector of the Crown, Archon of Coronation, and Ember Wild Captain. We also want to keep in mind the courts, like Court of Ire and Court of Grace, because those are good too. But these are way more interesting. Protector of the Crown says when you enter the battlefield, you become the monarch. Thumbs up. All damage that would be dealt to you is dealt to Protector of the Crown instead. This could be really good if you have some of these damage effects that would deal damage to yourself, like Earthquake or Rolling Earthquake. Archon of Coronation does a similar effect, sort of preventing that damage. This is especially good if you're passing the Monarch around too. And Emberwild Captain makes you the Monarch, but also makes it so that your opponents have to pay a price of damage to attack you. And when you're trying to burn them out with huge over-the-top spells, then Emberwild Captain could give you that extra push to deal lethal damage. Speaking of damage, let's get in more damage with Chandra's Ignition, Disrupt Decorum, and Acroma's Will. Jared doesn't have evasion, no trample, no flying, no way to push that damage through. So cards like Chandra's Ignition can hit all creatures on all opponents, 
that can weaponize Jared's huge buffness. Disrupt Decorum has goads so that all our opponents can attack each other, lowering their life totals, but also opens up lines of attack for your commander. And Acroma's Will? Man, it can just give our creatures of invasion or protection or just a huge blast of damage, gaining us a ton of life too. It's a really fun spell and really great with your commander on the battlefield. Next, let's talk about a few more favorite cards. Arc Bond is so fun. Two and a red for an instant, you choose target creature. Whenever that creature is dealt damage this turn, it deals that much damage to each other creature and each player. This means that you can sort of radiate the damage to all of these other players. And there's a lot of damage being thrown around in here. It's really fun to have this instant speed, huge damage to everything, but then also your Brash Taunters are triggering, your Stuffy Dolls are triggering, your Vigor's growing stuff, your Garthama's drawing cards. It ends up being a really crazy effect that's so much fun to play. I also really like Cauldron of Souls as a level of protection. You can tap it to give any numbers of creatures persist. And this can work really well with your commander, with any of the other cards that give you Monarch. It doesn't work well with the cards like Brash Taunt or Stuffy Doll, but they have Indestructible, so they're not gonna die very much anyways. Basically, with all the damage we're throwing around, we wanna be able to protect our creatures a little bit, and Cauldron of Souls is political, it's interesting, and those minus one, minus one counters vanish when Vigor's on the battlefield pumping everything plus one, plus one. And then I also like Naya Charm. It can tap down all your opponent's creatures, letting us get a huge attack. That's another form of sort of evasion for your commander. And it can sometimes steal back the Monarch. It's really great. Uh, three damage where you need it, fine. That's a mediocre effect, but sometimes you might do three damage to Vigor or Grothama or your commander. It's pretty good. And then also we have this return target card from a graveyard to its owner's hand. That's just value. Sometimes you're gonna to wanna to be able to get specific effects back again, especially when they're so important to the deck, like becoming the Monarch or getting a big board wipe. So having that recursion is gonna make this deck run more smoothly. And then finally, if you are going to be playing an over-the-top deck, let's get over-the-top amounts of damage. Fiery Emancipation triples the damage. So if you're playing Blasphemous Act, it does a crazy amount to all of your creatures and players. And then if you happen to have like a Boros Reckoner on the battlefield and they're then redirecting that damage, it'll triple again. And so Fiery Emancipation just ups everything so much, you're gonna need to pull out a calculator to figure out how much damage is being splashed around the battlefield. And I think that's the fun of this deck, are those huge amounts of damage. You know, I love the way that this deck plays. Let's talk about that a little bit. First up, we're gonna to wanna to start the Monarch going around the table, and we're gonna to wanna to let our opponents get creatures onto the battlefield and trade the Monarch back and forth. That's when our board wipes can really come into effect, and especially if we have some of these effects like Boros Reckoner, True Fire Captain, Stuffy Doll, Brash Tall Taunter, and your Commander, Hornet's Nest, Grothama, all of these effects are so great because they work well together. These creatures are resilient because they work well with your own board wipes. They're powerful because your opponent's board wipes sometimes have a hard time interacting with them. This deck just destroys other creature-based strategies. It will be weak to counter spells, unfortunately, because you are trying to land a big star storm. You know, you're trying to cast this big spell. If you are in a counterspell heavy meta, take precautions like uh, Veil of Summer, Pyroblast, Red Elemental Blast, uh, Beseju Who Shelters All, ways to get your spells through. Uh, and once your big creatures that are difficult to interact with are on the battlefield, you're gonna be running over your opponent's decks. I wanna start off by thanking Jevin who built this deck. Click on the link in the description, which will take you to his Twitter so you can follow him and find out everything that he does. I also wanna thank my sponsor, Cool Stuff Inc. If you wanna get some awesome cards for this deck, check them out. I also wanna thank my patrons. They support me every single day and make the Jumbo Commander YouTube channel happen. Thank you, patrons. And thank you for watching. This is a great deck. I really encourage you to build something like this because it is so fun and so over the top and so EDH to its core. All right, everyone. Talk to you later. Bye.